Dogumentary TV, producing the best breed documentaries on YouTube. My name is Gerald Antoine. Uh, I'm from European Doberman Stud, and I'm an avid European Doberman lover. Today, we're out here introducing Sigmund to the famous Roscoe, and we want to acclimate them together. So we want to make sure we want to make sure they um, they grow up and know each other as as little puppies, and when they get to adulthood, they're like brothers. I imported Sigmund from Russia about two and a half months ago. Um, he's a great dog, he's smart. I got him doing little tricks already. I had a great rapport with a breeder over there. She communicated with me via email, WhatsApp, and I felt comfortable, but I've been following her for many years and she has produced some great, great dogs. When you import a dog, you know, you take a chance. And the chance is the dog you see online may not be the dog you get, or the dog you see online is not presenting the character that you're looking for. So when I, when I specifically went to this particular breeder, I had a trust in her. And she would send me videos, she would send me pictures, she would send me videos on YouTube when they're feeding when they're playing, how he interact with his siblings, who's the pack leader, all those things are identifiable. But at the end of the day, you're always taking a chance on importing a dog that you cannot put your hands on or look in person. It has to be a lot of trust involved. Sigmund's about five and a half months old now. I imported him from Russia because typically when I want to um, get a 100% European dog uh, that has some working bloodlines in them and the parents are current champions, you want to go to um, uh, Eastern Europe to get the nice dogs, even though they do have some nice breeders here in the United States. I chose the name Sigmund because uh, I love the uh, the, the guy Sigmund Freud, who was always a thinker. And um, when I saw Sigmund, she said that he was the smartest one of the bunch. Um, he tends to go for the food fastest. Um, his food drive was high. So he actually knew what he wanted. And I love the fact that Sigmund was a very strong name. Not too many dogs have that name. First thing I wanted to do is build an unbreakable bond with my dog. So when I do the training, if we have to do a boarding train, he'll always know who daddy is at the end of the day. So when I, when I imported Sigmund, I specifically wanted a dog that was able to be a good family dog because there's kids involved, but I also wanted to have that prey instinct to do some protection work. And his bloodline had a, had a, had a, a vast amount of IPO, ZTP work in there. And that type of stuff, you really can't gauge a dog until you figure out if he has that genetic DNA. And so my goal with Sigmund is first, is to be a loving house dog, a loving family dog. But also I want him to be able to do some protection sports such as um, Shitson, uh, which is called IPO over here. And uh, we're working right now with a trainer, Al Benuelos, to, um, to get him geared up for that. So now we're doing tracking right now. We're doing a little bit of obedience and we're building his drive. And that's what you do when you have small puppies, right? And you wanna build that confidence. At this point with him coming to me at three and a half months, and he's, he was born in June, um, I'm overly impressed with um, the results that he has so far, how she 
pre-stimulated the dog to, um, to environmental sounds. And um, the first day we put him out, we staked him out, we put him on a rag. It was like automatic instinct. He was going bananas over the rag. It, it wasn't something we had to build or flirt with him with. He automatically knew what he wanted to do. Barking on it, want to bite it. And that's the stuff that you look for when you want a sports protection dog. You want those things that intangibly kicks in. You don't want to spend a whole year and a half trying to bring a prey drive out in the dog. It's worse things, less to, uh, more to come when you do that. So, so far since I've had him, I've been impressed. He's crate trained already. Um, so I'm, I'm getting used to getting up at five in the morning now and walking him. I haven't done that in years, um, but it's, it's getting me back into the groove of things. And that's what puppies do. That's what kids do. They get you doing things that you generally didn't have to do for a while and then you're doing it again. And now it's like instinctively. Today was the first time introducing um, Sigmund to any, pup, any dog that's younger than him. Um, he has a, a stepbrother named Brody's at the house who's five years older than him, and he doesn't play, you know, but Sigmund is all about playing. Today was an introductory time to meet Roscoe. Um, they was a little bit iffy about each other. Roscoe was more open to it than, than Sigmund, but after we put the ball out, they started playing with each other and competing with each other. They have some of the same DNA, Roddy's and Doberman's anyway. But it's great to introduce them now as young puppies because in adulthood, two intact males who have never met each other, who are competing for the same object, would not be possible. It just, they wouldn't listen to you because they're used to doing it on their own. And when you have to share space with two male dogs or two female dogs, it can be a little bit chaotic. So now we're introducing them to each other. They got along pretty well. They're drinking out of the same bowl, which would not, would not be possible as well as grown dogs. And um, we do this every two or three weeks. We introduce them to each other. We do it in a way that they know who's the alpha dog here, which is me and the owner of Roscoe. But at the same time, we're overseeing them. They're getting along great. And I look forward to doing this many, many more times. This is the first time me seeing Roscoe in person. And I'll be honest with you, he's a very athletic puppy for his age. He's up on his feet. He's jumping, trying to get the ball before it hits the ground. He's not rolling over. And he's a really, really athletic dog. And I'm telling you right now, he's, he's gonna be something. He's gonna be, a, he's gonna be a wonderful, wonderful Roddy. If I was in the Roddy's, I'd be getting one just like him. Obedience training is continuous. Um, even as grown people that we are, we're always in the gym. We're always doing some kind of cardio because that's a life, a life commitment. And when you're dealing with animals, whether they're dogs or cats or horses, you have to keep stimulating them and do some kind of obedience training to keep that, to keep that stimulation going so they can always know that they got to do what they're supposed to do. And, and you know, the other thing too, when you're dealing with working European dogs, especially Rottweilers who are instinctively have protection in them, it was beautiful to see how he's, how he, 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 um, that he works with the kids and he's very cognizant of his size and his drive. He doesn't push the kids over. He's gentle with the kids. And that is something that you really want because a lot of dogs don't know their strength and they don't know their size. And the kids are learning from Roscoe and Roscoe is learning from the kids. So that makes it a wonderful, wonderful family dog and less worrying that the owners have to deal with when they're introducing Roscoe to other kids that come around to play with his kids. Today was a success, you know, that when they first met each other, they was getting familiar with each other, sniffing each other, make sure they was, that each of them was cool with each other and they got along great and today was a huge success. I look forward to this happening a lot more often. The real cool thing about this, which it wasn't planned, is that Roscoe was born June 8th and Sigmund was born June 16th, eight days apart. So you get to see them both, the maturation process from childhood to adulthood. 
the size comparison. They both got nice dark mahogany markings. Both beautiful dogs. And you gotta think about it. I mean, they got along really, really good for two dogs that's used to playing with other grown dogs. They're able to play with somebody their own age. And it's a beautiful thing. So you gotta look at the fact that you keep doing this, you, you get them together, let them know that they're, they're there for each other, but they're there to have fun. But they never really understand me. I need a comma like I need a Grammy. She needs the flow with the designer panties. Yeah, we eat panty, check the pantry from the sound waves to the rebel lines from the tattered bridges to expensive dishes. Now we eating ends with these new beginnings. Yet the sign of major for the bank roll. But thank the Lord that it dies at penitentiary. Nice guy, but my inside is in mighty flashy with a bird's eye. Scribble gems, stick in my pockets, lines till I get arthritis. My heart is icy, walking past the bouncer like I knew somebody. Cool, like hella cloudy or the poison ivy. But from like a stroller with a coast sign, me, I don't even like me. No, I'm staring in the mirror in different poses. The shy, but timid, the riddles were being as a simple minded. Find a road to top, I'm taking it from the ground, I'll be paving it. 